Hello everyone, I am meteorologist Hutch Johnson and we're going to look at some changes in the pattern in our weather as we head into the new year. There has been a and is a sudden stratospheric warming event taking place and as that has happened, it's going to introduce a chance for some much, much colder air, the coldest air of the season thus far for many across the northern plains. So we'll take a look at that. We're also going to take a look at that current pattern and how it changes. And then we'll look at when we're expecting our changes to take place. And as we head into the new year, we do have some stormy weather starting to be hinted at by forecast models. I'm going to show you where we expect that to take place and we'll get started right now. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at what we call a temperature anomaly. What's changing and when will the cold air begin to dive south out of the Arctic North, not just out of Canada, folks. This is out of the Arctic North. What you're looking at here, the colors are indicative of anomalies or changes in temperature from normal. And where you see the blue shades here, that is air that is colder than average now over the Gulf Coast states up in the northern part up near Canada and along the international border we have air that's much warmer than average that is working its way into the lower 48. Now as we set this into motion you're looking at right now Thursday and into Friday heading into the New Year's weekend and that cold air pools around the southeastern United States throughout the day on Friday and starts exiting off the Atlantic shore. There is a cool pool that will work its way through the northern plains North Dakota Minnesota Chicago this is for New Year's Eve and that that's going to bring cooler weather there. But behind it in the jet stream flow is yet another warm up that is set to take place, rolling off the Canadian Rockies of Alberta and Calgary. That will swing its way through the Great Lakes region as we head into the New Year's Day time frame, and that will continue to work its way to the south and to the east, allowing this to continue its trek. Now we're looking at New Year's Day, and what we'll start to notice is a cooler than average pattern across the southeastern United States with that warm bubble of air, if you will, pushing its way through the Great Lakes. So that is where that goes as we head into the uh, first couple of days of the new year. Now, as we set this back into motion, you'll see cooler than average air along the southwestern United States. That is another low pressure system that is going to dig far to the south and bring a big time change as we head into well about the first week, about the first five to seven days of the new year. That system could bring some uh, very stormy weather to the Gulf Coast and East Coast states. And here comes another wave of warm on the American model, hitting the Northern Plains into the 6th of the month of the new year. And then downslope warming off the Rocky Mountains heats up another air mass that slides through. And here is the big change that starts coming. And this pool of cool that you see in the far north is the one that will really change things. We're talking about temperatures way, way below average. And this is as we head toward the middle of the month. So what does that mean? That means that the sudden stratospheric warming is going to bring us a change in the pattern that we'll see over North America in the form of an Arctic air mass, the first of the season, that will come at us basically off the Rockies of Canada heading into the north central United States. Meanwhile, a very active pattern in the southern U.S. will take place, and that's going to keep the chances of wintry weather for the south in the form of rain and even snow, and it could be a potent system working its way into the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. And to show you more on that, let's take a look at then the uh, European model then with these storm systems as we work through. And both models are showing an indication of this change along the Gulf Coast states. What I do want to point out here as you look at the surface pressure pressure pattern, as well as the future radar. The green is rain, the blue is snow, and the pink would be mixed precipitation. Setting this into motion through the time frame from now, we'll have some showers and storms that will be exiting 
with the system off the North Atlantic coast. That is the one that brought the blizzard conditions to the Central Plains and the ice storm to the Northern Plains. Look how quiet we are through New Year's Day. Just a very cool high pressure system that will roll out of the Rockies and into the Northern Plains. Other than that, for the most part, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day quite quiet nationwide. But we will have an active pattern along the Southern United States with this wave developing in Louisiana as we start the new year. Another one on its way from the southwestern United States. Watch how this advances as we carry it through. With the Gulf Coast system will eventually work its way up into the North and Middle Atlantic states and zip off the East Coast. Here comes our next wave off of the southwestern United States bringing much needed rain to East Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. And here we have a chance at some snow working its way into the northeastern United States. So we have an active pattern as we head into the first full week of the new year along the Gulf Coast states. And we'll have a persistent flow of weather waves, we'll call them, working their way off this well, basically the Hudson Bay low, that system will continue to bring waves of snow chances to the international border counties from the Great Lakes region into the Northeast, but not as big as this system making landfall in the Pacific Northwest. This is on the 6th of January of the new year. So the American model shows this system making landfall as we head into the middle of the first week, and that could bring some changes with another Colorado low, dare I say it, developing out of the uh, system as we go into that second full week of the new year. Here is a look at the uh, another model. This is the American model. This one goes out just a little bit farther. And what I wanted to show you is how this one advances the pressure pattern as we go through. Keep in mind, the farther we get out in time, the more changeable this forecast is going to become. It's just a hint. It's called model guidance for meteorologists as a reason. This is not the forecast that, that we are forecasting to absolutely take place, but it, both models are showing a track of unsettled weather along the Gulf Coast states through the first week of the new year. Here we go. You're looking at New Year's Eve quiet coast to coast cold burp making its way out of canada into the northern plains for new year's eve and new year's day then we'll see an active pattern develop in the south southern and central plains of the united states wave one working its way through the southeast pretty insignificant with some spotty showers another wave making its way in as we cross into the third and fourth of the month look at that some snow showers possible according to this model in parts of central oklahoma not far from norman but rain making its way through the south central gulf coast states where it is much needed as we go into the third and fourth of the month that meanders its way along the gulf coast states there is a wave of unsettled weather on the European model here and the GFS model, both showing up in the northern tier of states from the Great Lakes region to the northeast. None of these are big moneymaker storm systems that are going to stop anything until we get into this system. Making landfall in the Pacific Northwest, this one will definitely be impactful to our friends in the uh, northwestern part of the United States as we have another wave working its way off of Hudson Bay. So, Active weather as we go into the second week, this is now the 7th and 8th of January in the northeastern United States. But watch this thing here. This low working its way in off of the whoop, southeastern United States will basically work its way onshore and develop into what could be another Colorado low type system. Look at the active weather off the southeast and the northeastern United States as we cross into the 6th and 7th of the month. And here we go with that Colorado low developing right here. In the central plains we go. This is the 9th and 10th of the month. Here comes a very cold Arctic high pressure system that is uh, got very cold, dense air behind it that will be making its way in. And watch this system as, whoops, I, I think I skipped the dates on you there. Let's go back and advance this from the Pacific Northwest now as it works its way across the Rocky Mountains into the central plains. And this system 
definitely changes things a little bit. A, cold air makes its way in, and we could have some very active weather heading from the Gulf Coast states up the Atlantic seaboard as we go into the 10th to the 13th of the month. That is a long ways out. It's far from a sure bet. So that's what we're looking at meteorologically. What does all this mean? Uh, I, I have high confidence that we're going to see a very good chance of some cold and Arctic weather outbreaks as we approach the middle of the month of January. We may have to wait till at least the 10th to start seeing it develop, though, to have more confidence. It will be developing in the Rockies near Calgary and north of that in the Northwest Territories. That's where the cold air is, is expected to come from. When that starts making its way down, we'll have that chance at seeing some much colder weather in the northern plains that will dive all the way into the Ohio River Valley and the northeast. And along that cold air uh, dome in the south, we could have some unsettled wintry weather taking place in the form of snow and cold. So what has been a fairly quiet weather uh, season for winter here in the Northern Plains looks to be changing to a much, much colder one. How cold are we talking? Well, let's see if we can pop a little bit of information on that as far as temperatures go. And to do that, we'll take one more look at this before I let you go. First and foremost, we're looking at the American model again, and it takes it just a second to load up. And what we're gonna look at here is some temperatures. And these temperatures, again, will be the, uh, well, we'll go ahead and look at air temperatures near the surface so that you can get a feel for the middle of the month. And I'm not gonna wait, wait for the whole thing to load up. It's gonna be that long before we really get the super cold air starting to penetrate into the lower 48. So we're gonna jump in time to a farther in time here, out into January in that first week. Here's the fourth, and when you see the purples, these are sub-zero air starting to form in the central plains of Canada and the prairies. Now, as we take a look from the upper uh, central part of the frame, we can see some cold air pooling up there that's sub-zero as we go into the fifth and sixth of the month. Watch what happens up here, though, in parts of Alberta and Calgary uh, area as we head into the, well, the second full week. We're talking air temperatures that could be 15 below, 20 below or colder. Uh, and that is something that's a little bit more typical of winter in the North American continent as we head into the latter part uh, or the middle part rather of January. Most of the Southern and Central Plains of the United States remain fairly warm. And then as this continues to advance through time, we see that cold air mass pool and dive into the lower 48 as we get into the middle of the month of January. You're looking at the 10th of the month of January. Here it comes from the North. And that is as we head into the 11th, 12th, and by the 15th, here it comes almost straight South out of the prairies of the Arctic. That is a look at some changes in our weather pattern and what it looks like. Meteorologically speaking, a lot can change. So we'll keep you apprised of that. Uh, we do have an active pattern along the Gulf Coast states, but that doesn't develop until after the New Year's celebration and we get into the first week of the New Year, around the 5th to the 7th, all the way from say the Houston area through the Gulf Coast states and the mid-Atlantic states will see a very active pattern with several rounds of rain that's much needed in some areas. And then as we get beyond that into the second week of January, we'll see the potential for the development of another system off the coast of California. If that develops, we better be watching things for another Colorado low to develop. And then we'll keep you apprised of that. That could bring a big time wintry mix to the central plains and the east coast states. So we'll keep our eyes on that. That's what we're watching. That means we have pretty quiet weather, but not necessarily hot weather to uh, ring in the new year here for everybody. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. If you liked what you saw here, hit like on this video. I sure appreciate that. And also, don't tell your friends, Hutch's Weather and Hutch'sWeather.com for a meteorological long look at outlook as well as what the highlights are as we go through the next several days. Thanks for watching.